Since the last time you all shared the stage, Senator Sanders, a self-described Democratic Socialist, has surged into the lead nationally in the Democratic race. And there's a new person on the stage tonight, Mayor Michael Bloomberg, a former Republican who spent millions of his own dollars to run in this race. What hasn't changed, a majority of Democratic voters still say their top priority is beating President Trump. So Senator Sanders, Sanders, the first question to you. Mayor Bloomberg is pitching himself as a centrist who says he's best positioned to win in November. Why is your revolution a better bet? In order to beat Donald Trump, we're going to need the largest voter turnout in the history of the United States. Uh, Mr. Bloomberg had policies in New York City of stop and frisk, which went after African-American and Latino people in an outrageous way. That is not a way you're going to grow voter turnout. What our movement is about is bringing working class people together, black and white and Latino, Native American, Asian American, around an agenda that works for all of us and not just the billionaire class. And that agenda says that maybe, just maybe, we should join the rest of the industrialized world, guarantee health care to all people as a human right, raise that minimum wage to a living wage of 15 bucks an hour, and have the guts to take on the fossil fuel industry because their short-term profits are not more important than the future of this planet and the need to combat climate change. Those are some of the reasons we have the strongest campaign to defeat Donald Trump. So so if speaking to the needs and the pain of a long neglected working class is polarizing, I think you got the wrong word. What we are trying finally to do is to give a voice to people who after 45 years of work are not making a nickel more than they did 45 years ago. We are giving a voice to people who are saying we are sick and tired of billionaires like Mr. Bloomberg seeing huge expansions of their wealth while a half a million people sleep out on the street tonight. And that's so what we are saying, Pete, is maybe it's a time for the working class of this country to have a little bit of power in Washington rather than your billionaire campaign contrib contributors. Hey, uh, all right, look, first of all, I know. <laughs> Look, a billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. <laughs> Democrats are not going to win if we have a nominee who has a history of hiding his tax returns, of harassing women, and of supporting racist policies like redlining and stop and frisk. Look, I'll support whoever the Democratic nominee is. But understand this, Democrats take a huge risk if we just substitute one arrogant billionaire for another. This country has worked for the rich for a long time and left everyone else in the dirt. It is time to have a president who will be on the side of working families and be willing to get out there and fight for them. That is why I am in this race and that is how I will beat Donald Trump. Senator, we got to wait for Klobuchar. Senator. Um, I think we have two questions to face tonight. One is, who can beat Donald Trump? And number two, who can do the job if they get into the White House? And I would argue that I am the candidate that can do exactly both of those things. Uh, I'm a New Yorker. I know how to take on an arrogant con man like Donald Trump that comes from New York. I'm a mayor, or was a mayor. I know how to run a complicated city, the biggest, most diverse city in this country. I'm a manager. I knew what to do after 9-11 and brought the city back stronger than ever. And I'm a philanthropist who didn't inherit his money, but made his money. And I'm spending that money to get rid of Donald Trump, the worst president we have ever had. And if I can get that done, it will be a great contribution to America and to my kids. Vice President Biden, I'll let you weigh in here. In terms of who can beat Donald Trump, NBC did a poll yesterday. It says Joe Biden is best equipped to beat Donald Trump. That's what your poll said. 
and has said that I can beat him in, the, in those toss-up states, too, those states we have to win. I'm ahead by eight points across the board. So in terms of being able to beat Donald Trump, I'm better positioned, according to your poll, than anybody else to beat Donald Trump. Number one. Number two. The mayor makes an interesting point. The mayor says that he has a great record, that he's done these wonderful things. Well, the fact of the fact of the matter is he has not managed his city very, very well when he was there. He didn't get a whole lot done. He had to stop and frisk, throwing a folk close to five million young black men up against the wall. And when we came along in our administration, the President Obama, and said we're going to send in a moderator to a mediator to stop it, he said that's unnecessary. So I. We we're going to get a chance to talk about the mayor's record. But in terms of who is best prepared to beat Donald Trump, look at your poll and what it says. Mayor Buttigieg, you'd like to weigh in. Decent human beings are working people, are people who believe in justice, compassion, and love. And if there are a few people who make ugly remarks, who attack trade union leaders, I disown those people. They are not part of our movement. But let me also say what I hope my friends up here will agree with, is that if you look at the Wild West of the Internet, talk to some of the African-American women on my campaign, talk to Senator Nina Turner, talk to others and find the vicious, racist, sexist attacks that are coming their way as well. So I would hope that all of us understand that we should do everything we possibly can to end the viciousness and ugliness on the internet. Our campaign is about issues. It's about fighting for the working families and the middle class. It is not about vicious attacks on other people. Senator Wynne. Teddy Roosevelt to Barack Obama. This country has been talking about the need to guarantee health care for all people. And yet today, despite spending twice as much per capita, Chuck, twice as much as any other major country on earth, we got 87 million who are uninsured or underinsured. We got over 60,000 people who die every year because they don't get to a doctor on time. We're getting ripped off outrageously by the greed and corruption of the pharmaceutical industry, which in some cases charges us 10 times more for the same drugs because of their price fixing. 500,000 people go bankrupt every year because they can't afford medical bills. So let me be very clear to my good friends in the Culinary Workers Union, a great union. I will never sign a bill that will reduce the health care benefits they have. We will only expand it for them, for every union in America, and for the working class of this country. Senator Warren, you, you were- We got a lot of people in here. We got a support Some. It's my turn, yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Somehow or another, Canada can provide universal health care to all their people, half the cost. UK can do it, France can do it, Germany can do it, all of Europe can do it. Gee whiz, somehow or another, we are the only major country on earth that can't do it. Why is that? And I'll tell you why. It's because last year the healthcare industry made a hundred billion dollars in profits. Pharmaceutical industry, top six companies, $69 billion in profit. And those CEOs are contributing to Pete's campaign well, and other campaigns up right. here. Let's clear this so up. So maybe, right maybe it right. is finally time that we said as a nation, enough is enough. The function of a rational health care system is not to make the pharmaceutical industry and the drug companies rich. It is to provide health care to all people as a human right, Mr. not a privilege, Mr. Vice President, no premiums, no Mr. Vice President, go. no deductibles. Let's go ahead. And then Senator Warren. Mr. Vice President. President put money into Republican candidates for the United States Senate when some of us, Joe and I and others, were fighting for Democrats to control the United States Senate. And maybe, we can talk, maybe we can talk about a billionaire saying that we should not raise the minimum wage or that we should cut Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid. If that's a way to beat Donald Trump, Wow, I would be very surprised. Thank you, Senator. Vanessa, to you. Right, wait. Let them, let them. Guarantee health care to all people. Why three people owe more wealth than the bottom half of America when 500,000 people sleep out on the street? 
why hundreds of thousands of bright young kids can't afford to go to college and 45 million remain in student debt. Bottom line here, real change never takes place from the top on down, never takes place from an oligarchy controlled by billionaires. We need to mobilize millions of people to stand up for justice. That's our campaign. Join us at BernieSanders.com. Thank you. Senator, thank you. Folks, uh, thank you. Uh, that concludes tonight's debate. Our thanks to my fellow moderators, to the candidates, and of course to all of you, the audience, here and at home. The Nevada caucuses are this Saturday with the South Carolina primary just one week later. Then the big prize, Super Tuesday on March 3rd. We'll be following it all for you. For now, for all of us at NBC News, I'm Lester Holt. Good day.